Hello and welcome back to Redirecting. I'm going to be talking about a story that was shared with me by one of our viewers that I find very interesting. Uh, last year sometime I talked about how Russia was interfering with African Americans and now what we're going to be talking about now is Russian military inside of Africa. How they're making quiet moves into Africa. Now, what I'm going to be sharing with you is an article where they're calling it a private military corporation, but it is stated that this private military corporation does have ties with the Russian government. So um, it boils down to the fact that they will use something stating, oh, it's just a private military to try, try to mask the fact that they themselves are indeed involved. And so it kind of makes you think, not really wonder, because many of us are starting to really see, know, and understand uh, what is taking place in this world. It's like the scales are falling off of our eyes, the uh, curtain is being pulled back, and a lot of things are becoming more clear. The so-called dark, black, indigenous populations of the world are soft targets, easily controlled, easily manipulated. And this is why so many countries have been able to infiltrate Africa in modern times, because we already know historically Africa was carved up and divided up by many European nations. But in today's time, we are seeing the same thing happening, or should I say continuing. And it seems like Russia was kind of silent a bit on much of this, while uh, you have China, who's made a major mark in Africa. You have the European nations who've never left Africa. You have India, who is uh, well engrafted into Africa. Everyone is staking their claim yet again in Africa. And so what makes you think that Russia doesn't want their piece of the pie, too? So you have these quiet military groups moving into Africa. Now, who, long, who knows how long this has been going on? But the fact that they are able to shows you that um, Africa is still indeed vulnerable. And in another video, I may talk about why this has been allowed, okay? Um, and when I say this, I'm, gonna, I'm not speaking from... Um, the position of why has um, man allowed this or why have African leaders allowed this, but more from the perspective of why the Most High himself has allowed this. Because again, we know that Africa, Africa is the cradle of civilization. Okay. Everyone knows this. And so there is a reason, a divine reason why this has been allowed to take place for a very long time. Time. So now I'm going to get into the article that will kind of explain some of the movings or some of the actions of Russia inside of Africa. Okay, um, again, they are making their moves just like every other nation has already done for a very long time. <clears throat> okay, it says, while many Western countries have a tradition of private military corporations or PMCs, Russia's own history of PMCs and mercenaries is distinct. Furthermore, the distinction between the two leads to complex questions, particularly relating to the Wagner Group, an organization which acts as a PMC or a private military corporation, but is in fact a mercenary outfit. From 2017 onward, it has been slowly making its way into Africa, in countries such as the Central African Republic, Sudan, and Libya. Founded in 2013, the Wagner Group has gained significant name recognition over the past few years. It is headed by Dmitry Utkin, a former colonial or Russian military intelligence, GRU. And this is expected to be funded and supported by Yevgeny Privganim. I'm not saying that I'm pronouncing these names correctly, but I'm going to try my best. 
They are operational in the Central African Republic, Syria, Ukraine, Yemen, Libya, and Sudan, where they work both with the Russian government as well as independently. Unlike well-known companies such as DynCorp and Blackwater, Russia does not have the same domestic rules and regulations that the USA requires for private military corporations and private security companies. In fact, according to Maria Zabulatskaya, a member of the legal division of Russian Ministry of Foreign Affairs, under Russian law, it is not possible to set up a PMC or use one abroad. This is because PMCs are not regulated under Article 359 of the Russian criminal criminal code as mercenaries and their financing are not allowed. Furthermore, Article 208 prohibits the formation of armed groups, which is backed up by Article 13 of the Russian Constitution. However, these laws are neither followed nor enforced nor clearly understood by Russian law. Even an effort to pass a law in the Russian Duma in 2018 that would have defined PMCs in Russia was rejected by the Ministry of Defense. How convenient. Okay. How then does one explain the so-called Wagner Group or another well-known Russian private military company, the RSB Group? The answer lies in the distinction between or given between PMCs and mercenaries. Yet, it is not easy to answer given that it can be hard to distinguish between Russia's legal private military contractors and state-sponsored mercenaries. Again, how convenient. Okay, many claim that Wagner Group acts as a Russian paramilitary force, but it is more likely that was... I'm sorry, but it is more likely that what has made it effective is its ability to work closely with the Russian government due to Prigozhin's relationship with Russian President Vladimir Putin. Contrary to many other oligarchs, Prigozhin was not one of the known criminals who used the chaos of the 1990s to gain a foothold in the new power structure of Russia. He is known instead to work on unsavory jobs. One such example is the well-known Internet Research Agency, the agency responsible for interfering in the 2016 American presidential election, for which Prizozin was both sanctioned and indicted by the U.S. Justice Department, according to According to Lyle Bo Sabol, he is not afraid of dirty tasks. He can fulfill any task for Putin, ranging from fighting the opposition to sending mercenaries to Syria. He serves certain interests in certain spheres, and Putin trusts him. The transition to working in the shadowy world of mercenary work is henceforth no surprise particularly as Putin's and Prigozhin's relationship grows ever closer. Closer ties at the top may offer more opportunities for the Wagner Group to branch out and become more active. Though the Wagner Group suffered a setback in the Syrian battle of Deir el-Zor, they are still active throughout Africa, the Middle East, and Ukraine. Sudan and the Central African Republican, I'm sorry, Republic are Wagner's two large centers of influence. However, Yemen is not far behind. In September 2018, reports emerged confirming the deployment of the Russian mercenaries to Yemen. While its methods vary state per state, the business model used both in Syria and the Central African Republic is such that Wagner offers private troops to leaders, whether that be the Syria president, Bashar al-Assad, or Central Republican president, Faustin 
are changed to Dara in exchange for oil profits. However, the relationship between Africa and Wagner is far more complex than one simple business model. Okay, <clears throat> there's a lot more to read here, so I want to interject a little bit before I get into it. I'm going to be talking about Central African Republic, Sudan, Libya, and uh, that's it here um, within this particular article. But as you see, Russia is trying to get a foothold by moving quietly into Africa, um, bringing their military in. It always starts there. And as you see, um, they're doing this in exchange for oil profits. So when you talk about something such as this, um, it sounds like an exchange. Okay, we will um, insert our military. We'll send in private military contractors, which, in fact, are still linked to Russian government. Uh, they do this so that they can say, well, no, it's not the government. This is a private military corporation. It's just a game that they play. Oh, it's private, a private business, you see. But, again, these are games that they play, not just Russia, but many other nations. So you see now that Russia wants to get a foothold in there because they need access to oil profits. Everyone wants a piece of the African pie. And in order to carry out such things, not just through Russia, but China and the European nations and India, in order to carry out such things, you have to have a willing participant on the continent. And so when they go to these various countries and regions and they speak with the leaders and they sit down with these leaders, these leaders are free and open and they make these decisions to get in bed with these people who they know mean them no good and have not dealt with them fairly, but yet and still because of the corruptness of the African leadership throughout the continent, they are always going to make deals against the better interest or the best interest of their people. Because, in a nutshell, the only ones who really benefit or profit from these deals that are being made are always those in leadership and those on top, their families for the most part. But the, the people of Africa, the people that um, depend on right or righteous decision making, they don't benefit from these agreements that are being made with these foreign nationals. They don't benefit at all. So how is it good for Africa to make such deals with these wicked corporations and these wicked leaders? Okay, so let's get in here and see what's going on in the Central African Republic. It says, perhaps the Wagner Group's most ubiquitous presence is in the Central African Republic due to the recent media onslaught. Three journalists, Orkan Dismal, Alexander Rastergavia and Kur Kuril Ratschenko were killed in July 2018 while investigating the Wagner Group's presence in the Central African Republic, known as CAR. While there is no objective report stating that Wagner had anything to do with the murders, former Russian oligarch Mikhail Kordovakovsky has alleged that he has proof of Russian involvement and if anything, this incident has brought the Wagner Group's activities to a spotlight. However, Russia and indirect Wagner presence in the CAR or the Central African Republic did not begin in 2018. As early as December 2017, Russia obtained a UN exemption to the car arms embargo. This allowed Russia to supply light weaponry in 2018. Weapons, though, were not the only export sent to the car. Russia also sent along military personnel. This included the Wagner Group to protect both the government as well as mining facilities. CAR president, which is Central African Republic, Faustin Archange Terdero claimed that the troops were there to train our forces in combating plunderers. So let me just stop right there real quick. So you have the president of the Central African Republic who is 
um, helping to create the smoke screen by saying, oh, he's only here to train our military forces to combat plundering. That's what they're here for. But we always we already know that it's a lot more to it than that. Okay, as recent as January 2019, the Minister of National Defense in the car also suggested a Russian military base might be upcoming. This development would add to Russia's expansion on the African continent for a very small price. Russia's foreign policy aims are ultimately to be recognized as a great power. Part of that is expanding its global reach. Okay, so let me stop right there real quick before I go into Sudan. So what Russia is attempting to do is what Western nations have already done. They've already made a stronghold or created a stronghold in Africa. They actually never left, okay? They just pulled back a little, a little, meaning it appears as though they pulled back, but no, their influence has never left the continent. <clears throat> this is why you see loans and all types of bases and all types of deals being made. This is why China is there. China is not there because they have a love for the African people and they desire to help the African people. All of these foreign countries, their leaders are there because they want to continue their control of Africa while pretending to get in there rightfully through making deals with leaders. These are crooked deals that they are making. These are not deals that were intended to be there to protect the African population. For me, it's always been about the African population. You have those who want to try to pretend like these companies are there to help Africa or these countries and their leaders are there to help Africa. Uh, you have those who want you to believe that Africa is rising. No, Africa is not rising. Um, how can Africa be on the rise when it's still at the hands of wicked leaderships from these foreign nationals in cahoots with wicked African leaders. If the people are still on the bottom, how does that equate to Africa rising if the people or the population is still on the bottom? Okay, so now I'm going to go into uh, Sudan and then I'm going to end it off with Libya. It says, although the Central African Republic is host to most of the headlines for the Wagner Group's presence in Africa, it was also reported in July 2018 that Russian soldiers were sighted in South Darfur. This was confirmed by Sudanese President Omar Barsher, who stated that a big number of Russian specialists work in our country, and this is why we highly praise the role your country plays in preparing Sudanese military personnel. Again, this presence is to be expected. Stratfor reported that the Wagner Group sent employees to Sudan in January 2018 to protect gold, uranium, and diamond mines. In fact, Russian president, I'm sorry, in fact, Russian presence in Sudan was revealed as early as December 2017 when a video was published showing a Russian individual training Sudanese soldiers. Yet, as recent as December 2018, the conflict intelligence team reported social media posts suggesting the Wagner Group was not only protecting assets, but also operating within Sudan's cities. Photos from the region suggest Wagner Group operatives might be working with Sudanese military and secretary services. Furthermore, Russian Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Maria Zarkorova has stated as recently as January 20th, I'm sorry, January 23rd, 2019. So here we go. That's a couple of months ago, family. Okay. Okay. They've stated that according to our information, representatives of Russian private security companies who have nothing to do with Russian state bodies are operating in Sudan. In this statement, Zerkharova is referring to the Wagner Group and has claimed that the operations of these companies are purely for training Sudanese military and law enforcement staff. Okay, let me stop right there real quick. It was already established early on that the Russian government, um, although they claim not to have any dealings with all of this, uh, they are very close with these military, these private military countries or, or companies, should I say. 
very close with them. So they are not going in there with um, no um, connection to Russian government. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if Russian government actually put them in place to begin with. Okay, all of this sneaking about that we see that happens throughout the world where they mask themselves, they form um, these companies, these private companies. You see, like even the private prisons here in in the U.S. It's very obvious to me that there is a cahoots or some connection with government. They try to say, well, it's private, like some individual had a brain um, epiphany and decided, oh, I'm going to start a private military company. No, they are very much in cahoots with governments, very much. And they use these as fronts so that they can um, legally go in and do things that they wouldn't be able to do as governments, you see. And, of course, they're there to protect gold, uranium, and diamond mines. Protecting it for whom? For the precious African people? Are they protecting it for the Africans? Who are they protecting it for? Hmm? Those are the things, the questions that we should, be, we should all be asking. But, again, most of us are just so caught up in the, the right now, caught up in nonsense things. I see so much celebrity garbage that people focus on and talk about. Most of our people can care less what is happening in and around the world as long as they get their daily fix of nonsense and garbage. But this is why we are such easy, soft targets because these people, they observe us. They know that we are easy, soft targets. They know that they can feed us a line of garbage and bull and that we're going to fall for it. They know that they can feed us a bunch of entertainment, toss us a little... Uh, doggy nugget of information here and there. We're going to jump up and bite it like it's a kibbles and bits snack. And then we're going to go back to sleep while they mosey about doing their dirt. Whether it's here or abroad on the continent. Okay, I'm going to read the last one, which is Libya. It says the Wagner Group is also suspected of being present in Libya at the end of 2018. In a meeting between Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shogu and Libyan Marshal Khalifa Haftar, Pregozin was not only present, but a full participant in discussing the possible transfer of further Wagner mercenaries to Libya. Moreover, Russian news outlet RBC confirmed Russian forces were already in Libya by October 2018 and supporting Haftar. This support includes allegedly dozens of special forces and two military bases in Tabrak and Benghazi. The Wagner Group's presence in Africa illustrates the benefits that mercenaries can offer Russia. It allows Russia to to create an indirect, listen to this, this is why I said there is a connection. They're saying that they're Um, private military corporations, but listen to this real quick. It says, it allows Russia to create an indirect military presence abroad subtly. It also takes away much of the risk that a normal incursion would involve. Given the uncertain domestic regulations within Russia, mercenaries offer the Russian government deniability for their actions. At the same time, they give Russia an instrument for completing tasks that otherwise impossible via legal routes. That would be otherwise impossible via legal routes. In Africa, mercenary outfits like the Wagner Group allows Russia to expand their influence without committing the actual mission in question. As armed conflict is not the main reason for Russia's action in Africa, mercenaries are still a useful tool. It opens up the possibility of Russia as a partner in many of these states that need military support and resources. Russia is happy to provide these for a price. Russia's ambitions to become a global power are stymied 
somewhat by increased sanctions by Western countries. However, with, gl- with growing influence in Africa, Russia may be able to make the case that it does not matter what other countries within Europe, as well as the United States, believe international norms preclude. Rather, it may argue that expanding its global reach and ambitions can occur without the support of the current international world order. So basically, that's the end of the articles on this particular um, site here. But basically what's going on is uh, Russia is in this chess game as well. They've always been in this chess game. And so they are using... Um, certain African regions as strategic partners to position themselves within Africa too because they've seen for a very long time how other Western nations and Eastern nations such as um, China and India have inserted themselves there too. So Russia's like, okay, we are inserting ourselves into this game subtly. We're going to use private military corporations and mercenaries to go in on our behalf and pretend like um, is not the case, but who can prove it, Right. To me, it's common sense that uh, these private companies are not just going into um, Africa, not entering into the continent without the knowing or the consent of Russian government. It is very, very clear that they are positioning, positioning themselves just like everybody else, because everyone sees Africans and so-called black people worldwide as soft easy targets that are easily manipulated, easily controlled, and easily walked over. They know what to do. They've studied us. Everyone studied, studies us. Even our own people studies us. This is how everyone is able to get in and manipulate. This is how divide and conquer has happened and worked so well because everyone has studied us and they know us very well as a people. Black people, indigenous people around the world. And so no wonder um, you have people going into the continent of Africa, making deals with the leaders, treating the people like trash. And then from time to time, you'll see a video surface where they're talking about this person, how they're treating Africans. Who lets them in there? The African people let them in there. The African leaders, they let them in there. These people don't have a love for Africa. But we foolishly fall for the same okie doke time and time again throughout the world. Everywhere you go. See, the problem is dark indigenous populations worldwide, not just on the continent, but even North, South and Central America, in Europe, wherever we are. We do not know how to unify because they've already divided us. From corner to corner around the globe, we hate one another. North, East, South, and West. And all of these other nations know it. So they, they figure as long as they can keep us hating one another that we will never trust in one another and we can never unify with one another to think outside of this box they've put us in so that we can get out of their box. As long as we're thinking inside of their box, we'll never get out of it. But if we can begin to think outside of their box, we can figure a way to get out of it. Okay, it's unfortunate that we talk about these things. um, And for the most part, most people don't even care about these things. They only care about what's going on in their neck of the woods. It goes in one ear and out the other. It's just another topic to be discussed. Uh, There's a lot of talk about China's influence in Africa. But now... Let's open up the dialogue and see what Russia is doing in Africa. Let's talk about what Russia, nobody, um, as the person who shared this with me stated, nobody's really talking about what Russia is doing in Africa. Nobody's really talking about it because Russia's making quiet, soft moves. They're going under the radar, making their marks in Africa. So nobody's talking about it right now. But guess what? It's time to start talking about it. It's time time for us to begin to pay attention to the world around us. Because these things affect us. We've got to stop living in the dark. We've got to stop living in la-la land. It's time for us to get in the game ourselves. Get in the loop. Know what's going on. 
get out of this ghetto mindset, this ghetto mind trap that we're in, and pay attention to the world around us. With that, I will say shalom. Be sure to ring the bell to be notified of new uploads on this channel and also comment, share, like, and subscribe.